What's up, what's up, everybody? It is your boy, Mug the Dude here, and we're back with some Hero Coliseum. And today, we got the team build of all team builds. Shout out to the Ninja Clan Gaming, I believe. The Mighty Ninja Clan Gaming. This this unit right here is not the best unit. He is a common Krillin. But here's the, here's the deal. At level 1, out of 40, his HP is 3,900. His attack is 1,800. His defense is 85, 850. And then his speed is 2,400. So here's the deal. You can put whoever you want on this team to make this man work, right? So, you can patch any gaps you would like. So, if you really want to keep that Krillin alive, so place on a trigger square. Posing skill is clever technique. Place on a trigger square to swap own attack and speed values. Repeatable. So, it it is not the best position skill, right? There's obviously way better position skills, but here's the deal. His trigger squares are the back left and the back middle, but here's the deal. He does switch attack and speed values, so what I'd be thinking is you need to figure out a way to either gain him more speed or just put so much speed on the team that it is physically impossible for you not to go first, or you can plan to go second, right? So here's the deal, guys. Um, we got, so we got the Krillin. Now, you can put a high speed, high attack, high, um, defensive character. It really doesn't matter because he doesn't, it's not like, I'm gonna give an example here. It's not like the Beerus right here. I didn't mean to put you on the team or remove you, but here we go. It's not like the Beerus, the Beerus, not the Goku. Come on now, brother. That was my fault. That was Mugs. But, level 89 out of 99. His attack and his HP are so good, but his attack is really what you use him for. Now... Um, what's it called? The, what you're going to patch is his speed and his defense. With the Krillin, you can patch whatever you want. So, this is basically an open-ended team build. Put whoever you want on the team. So, in my opinion, you can put, um... Mm, it's difficult. Because I know I just said you have a lot of options, but it's really difficult to make a team for this man, considering he does not. he's not one of the best figures. So, here we go. I'm gonna actually put the Gogeta there because the Gogeta is one of the is a very top tier figure in this game considering his posing skill, the strongest fusion, plays on a trigger square for plus 20%. So he gives 20% to own damage dealt and plus 10% to damage taken by opponents if you go first and then second. It's basically flip flopped. He takes 20% less damage and all of your other figures take 10% less damage. So or his and 10%. So the they do 10% less damage. It's not you take less damage, but they're doing 10% less damage. So here we go, guys. Um. Him right in the middle because you can put him smack dab center trigger square, the first one in the middle, and then you could put him behind him. So if you really wanted to keep Krillin alive, use him there. But, excuse me, I burped and that's really rude of me and gross, guys. But he does swap his attack and speed values. So put him smack dab center and you can hide him in the back. Another figure I was thinking about using. Where is he? Now, I recommend using this next figure at level 99, or at level 60, or whatever his max is. I think it's 60, right? Or it's 40. It's 60. Him. Place on a trigger square for plus 10% to speed to all allies, and plus 20% to own ultimate attack damage, right? So his speed is 3,000, which is, it's very sizable. It is more than the Beerus. It is more than you. It is more than you. It is more than... You, it, no, it's not as much as you. You at level 99, it's higher than you, but you're not level, and you're level 60. So here we go, guys. You could put the trunks on there simply because he boosts speed by 170, and he has, swaps his attack and defense. So in one turn, he's going to have about, in one turn, he's going to have 2570 speed, right? Next turn, he's going to have freaking 27, 2740 speed. So, and he's going to switch it to attack, which... It's still not a very hard-hitting unit, but he's only level 1, and he's a common figure. So, you could put the Gogeta on there. You could put a figure that lowers damage um, lowers damage output. So, where is he? Um, <clears throat> I'm really thinking about another figure that's... I'm thinking about the Whis. I'll put the Whis on, and I'll put the one with higher HP, because I don't know if everybody has the number 67 Whis. But number 68, they do the same thing. Their position skills are the same thing. Their posing skills are the same thing. But she just has a tremendous amount of defense going with her. So I'm going to actually put the... I'm going to put the Whis on there, right there. Boom. So you can put him in the top left, him in the back, in the front, right in the middle. And then, um, where is he? Right here. You put him in the middle, and then the Whis in the top left, and then the Krillin. 
You can either go back left or back middle, considering he will be blocked either by the Whis or the Gogeta. If you're trying to prioritize the Krillin. This is all if you're trying to prioritize the Krillin. If you're just trying to make a team with Krillin on it, you can throw whoever you want on the team still. You can still throw whoever you want on this team. But I'm putting the Whis on there simply because damage reduction is, is very important in this game. Considering, like, there's a reason Gogeta and the Super Vegito are so good is they lower damage reduction. And then him, when your Master's HP gets below 5%, lowers damage reduction. Or, here's another one. You can put the Bardock in. I'm going to throw the Bardock on there. This is one of the weirdest teams I've ever built. Considering this is for an end Krillin. Shout out to you, the Mighty Ninja Clan Gaming. This is such a fun, like... I've never thought I would be building a team. When you first asked for it, I was like, this is insane. He wants me to build an N, uh, for an N, a common, very common, Krillin. But I don't do the, I don't do the, what's it called? The, these figures, these summons, I do these. Most of the time. But here we go, guys. I'm going to go through the decks that I made. Number seven. Here we go. Bardock. Cause simply because he can go in that back, that, um, that back slot. And then you can put him there. And then you could put him in the back left or the back middle. And you could put the Gogeta in the middle, him in the top right, and then him being blocked by the Gogeta regardless. And the only reason I'm doing that is if you want to boost his, boost his um, if you want to boost his speed, low, get, uh, gain attack. So him right there, plus 250 to own attack and plus 170 to own defense, repeatable. And for all allies. So he's going to get 250, so he's going to have about 2050. So his speed is going to be... What? Now that I think about it, place on a trigger square to swap own attack and speed values. So, yeah, you don't want to gain a lot of attack. You do, but then at the same time, you need, you're already swapping your attack to speed, so your speed's going to be lower, but your attack's going to be higher. It's not going to be that good, but if you want to gain speed, gain attack, and then it'll switch over to your speed when you put him in the posing skill. But right there, he makes everybody tankier, and he just makes everybody hit harder. Plus, he has 5,000 attack at level 51, which is very good. And then another figure, guys. These really are up here. I was talking about screw the Whis. Say you want to put the Rosé on. Say you want to put the Rosé on. He can go in that back left. I mean the top left. He can go in the middle. And then he can go behind the Rosé. Rosé can get attacked and gain attack and speed. Which is going to benefit you greatly. Considering he gains 1,000 attack. I mean 1,000 speed per attack he takes. Plus 1,500 to own attack when he takes an attack. And plus 10% to ultimate attack damage when attacked repeatable. Which, it's good, but it's not nearly as good as the Go Super, Super Saiyan 4 Goku. Which, I will link that down in the description below, guys. Insane amount of damage when you keep him on the field for a long time. That's all I have to say. Please watch it if you have not. I'll link it down in the description below, guys. Go down there and click down there. But here we go, guys. You have the Rosé, the Gogeta, the Bardock. All these good things, because if you put the Bardock on there, say you wanted to run, say you didn't want to put the Krillin on there just yet, you could put the Bardock in the top right, the Gogeta in the middle, and then the the Rose in the, the top left. Put you, Or you could put the Rose in the top left, Gogeta in the middle, you bottom... So you're going to take some damage from the master, but that's fine. And he's going to be gaining attack and defense, which makes him tank a lot better. And then you have him getting attack and defense, which he doesn't need it, but... He's a beast. He's gonna gain defense, which makes him tankier and just makes everything work better for the team cohesively. And survivability goes up greatly, obviously, when you raise your defense, guys. So, obviously, level 99, level 99, 51, level 1, because I pulled him. Shout out to the Ninja Mighty Mighty Clan, um, the Mighty Ninja Clan Gaming. Now, background story. You asked me to do it, and I was like, ah, I don't have that many TP medals. So, I went on and did a summon. First multi-summon. For the common summons, I got this man first one. And I was like, that is insane. Like, because I really wanted to do it because it's such an original unit. So, like, I was like, I have to. I have to do it. So, or you could put the Piccolo on there. Put the Piccolo. Um, middle. Obviously, because that's his only, only posing skill. And he does place on the trigger score for plus 350 to own defense and plus 5,000 to your master's defense stacks during that turn only. You could put him in there. Boom. Top. Then, obviously, the... Smack dab in the middle and the top, right? Him in the back middle or him in the top um, top right, which would be actually pretty decent. And then you could put him behind the piccolo, which you're gaining attack and defense. To take that piccolo out is going to be a tri uh, be tricky because he's gaining 170 to defense from the, from the Bardock. And then he's gaining a 350 to his own. So he's gaining 500 and... Let me do the math real quick, guys. I'm 
My math is decent, but it's not that good. 520 defense. So in the first turn, he's getting 2,700 defense. Second turn, he's getting another 520. So he's basically gaining 1,040 defense per two turns, right? Which is amazing. So he's going to have 3,200 defense. That is good. Like, Golden Frieza has that much defense, right? Where is he? I don't know what I'm doing now. Where is he? Golden Frieza. How much defense you got, Golden Frieza? 3,000. Who has the highest defense on the... Now that I think about it, I, do, I have done the highest defensive figures. You do a 3,000. And when he gains that, he just gains 700 defense, makes him have 4,000, which is absolutely insane. So, or I'm going to make it a little OG original, take out the, keep the Bardock in there, take out the Piccolo, because he's going to be a good substitute for the Piccolo. The Piccolo is basically to make sure your master doesn't die. But here we go. Um, yeah, or, yeah, you could do the Piccolo... This is actually going to be a pretty tanky rotation here. Piccolo in the middle. Bardock in the back. Right in the middle. Right behind the Piccolo. And then him in the top left. That is insane because he's going to be gaining 870 defense per turn. So he's going to have 5,000 defense. In two turns, he's going to have 5,000 defense. Which is an astronomical amount of defense. Like there's a reason defense is valuable and i didn't think it was that valuable because you had like the plus 20 percent damage buff from the brolies and stuff like that and the vegetos but here we go this is basically what the team would look like make be very tanky in the front to hide the krillin in the back or or you could completely go pure offense pure offense and pure speed and pure attack so speed descending um i wouldn't put the future gohan on this team because he does go in the front and he won't be able to hide the the Krillin, which will not be that good. So what I'd be doing is, where's the Vegito? Do I want to put the Vegito in there? You can put the Big Bang Vegeta in the middle, and then you can put the Krillin behind the Big Bang Vegeta, and then you can put another big speed unit like the, um, where is he? I'm going to actually take out the Bardock for this. Nope, uh, nope, want to go to attack now. Want to go to attack. Where's the God Q? He's coming up. There he is. could put the God Q in there so you could have him, him in the, no, him in the back left, him in the top middle, and then him behind the, um, trying to think of it, him behind the Big Bang Vegeta because you're going to have um, 4,000, 4,000, that's 8,000. So you're going to have about 9,800 speed right off the bat, which is good. But he's going to be gaining, he's going to give that Krillin 160. So you're going to have 2,000 if you put him on the same rotation. So you're going to have about 10,000 speed with that turn, guys. But it's all a matter of what figures you have because this this figure has so many holes in its stats that you can build a team around whatever hole you want to fill, right? Ha <laughs> that's gross, guys. Get your mind out of the gutter. I know what you're thinking. But here we go, guys. Um, it's different. Like, for the Rosé, I think I'd use him as the example. I'm going to use the... I'm not going to use you as the example because you're just as... You have such good stats that to fill a hole is impossible. The Broly... Build around speed, getting him that first turn and making that man do as much damage as possible because he only has 2,680 speed, which is not bad. And I have the one with higher speed. I don't have him at level 99. I'm going to get him to level 99 because how many dupes do I actually have into that Broly? Um, speed, because I know he has 3,000, so he should be coming up soon, right? Exactly. 3,000 speed already, guys. And I have three dupes into him all into his HP because he doesn't have a lot of HP, guys. But... That's basically going to do it for the team build. He is just, he has so many holes in his in his stats that it's very hard. Like, or I'm actually going to go back to the Piccolo. Um, I'm actually going to go to back to the Piccolo setup because I actually like that idea. So where's the Bardock? Because gaining that attack and then making the Piccolo tank better and then the uh, Super Boo, I mean not the Super Boo, the Fat Boo tank better, is able to hide him and he's gaining attack, attack, attack. And you're not going to be able to take that much damage, guys. But... That's going to do it for the video. Shout out to the mighty Ninja Clan Gaming for the um, team build suggestion. But that's going to do it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Muggsy Dude. Hope you guys had a fantastic day as always. Like, comment, subscribe as always. Did you deuces, everybody.